Shalap Garg and Noreen Vishnani represent the IG product team, and we are here to speak about the power of data policy. Now, let's look at what we aim to achieve in identity governance. We aim at meeting business needs through technology. We want to ensure that the right people have right access, not more, not less. We want to drive the organization to least privilege access over time. We want to limit the user interaction and promote process driven by rules and policies. Now, traditionally, people perform periodic access reviews on quarterly or annual basis, which is important. However, in between review cycles, the continuous compliance approach helps us to react to changes in the environment that are critical. This not only makes the life of the compliance team easier, but also enables increased security. One such policy that helps us to achieve continuous compliance is the data policy. Let's dive in. Once we have the data in our catalog, we perform certification of that data. In the process of gathering data, we can create controls to evaluate the data and react to the violations. So let's see what's possible through data policy. We can specify criteria for the data to be monitored. We can evaluate the data and we can react to it or remediate it. Now let's dive in to the product and see. So data policies can be broadly classified as collection data policies and publication data policies. Um, and we have today what we are going to see is the publication data policies and we have predefined set of uh, data policies already so that it becomes easier for the end users to use it. For example, we have uh, number based or statistic based uh, data policies like uh, accounts without owners. It probably will give you a number. Uh, then you have uh, the number of groups and you could get data based on certain criteria and also certain changes. Um, so users without emails and permissions with high risks um, and maybe the title department location or supervisor has changed. So these are different predefined policies that can be used. And uh, let's look at a little more detail on how to create one. So for now, I would want to create a data policy. Um, say to see if a supervisor has changed. This policy helps us to identify. Identities. Who's supervisors. Have changed. Now, what is detection type? Basically, once you have uh, specified a criteria and you receive the metrics, how do you want to see those metrics on the governance overview dashboard? Do you want it to be seen as policy violation metrics or do you want to see it as an event change metrics? Policy event metrics. So this uh, condition here would help us identify if this is an event or a violation. Um, in this case, we would say this is an event. And there are different ways in which a data policy can be triggered. It could be manual, uh, schedule based or event based. So if this policy is something that you would want to run once in a while, then manual would be the best choice. 
uh, if it is important and you would want to run it several times, uh, then we could schedule it. And let's see what's event based. So basically, your data source uh, can be either identity or an application. And based on your data source, uh, the event, the trigger events are different. For example, if it's identity, then you could automatically trigger data policy through identity publication or user curation or both. Uh, for now, we'll select user curation. Or you could say if it if your data source type is application, then your entity type could be permission or account. If we select permission, then identity publication, application publication, account curation, and permission curation are your trigger events. And similarly, if your entity type is account, then you could have trigger events. Now, go back to identity in this case, and we could select user curation, for example, and say user supervisor is changed. Now this is an expression builder that helps us verify different conditions. And we could go back and save this policy. We can see, see the policy that we have created. Now we could run this in run policy detection. And we see that currently we have one identity whose supervisor has changed. Now once we have the data, we can respond to it, react to it, or we could remediate it. Now let's look at the various remediation actions that are possible. So there are um, some settings that we could modify in case of remediation. We could run remediation action automatically when detected. We could run only for newly detected items. This could be turned on and off. Uh, we could provide a name to the remediation. And what are the different types of remediations that we can perform? So we could send an email notification. Uh, in some cases, we would want the supervisor to be notified. So we could send an email and they could take an appropriate action. Or we could trigger a change request, which would in turn trigger a help desk ticket in ServiceNow or any other help desk application. Or we could start a workflow. Or we could start a micro certification. Micro certification is nothing but a focused review or a specific certification. Now, what micro certification would do is basically it would uh, use an existing review definition. However, what it would finally do is just act on the data that gets detected through the data policy. So, uh, and 
we can have, like you can see in another example, I have a micro certification as well as a workflow. And so um, you could also add an email notification. So we are able to now add multiple remediations for a single policy. So this was about data policy and how you can define the criteria, specify the remediation, and in turn, how data policy allows us to do continuous evaluation of data and remediation of problems. Hope you found this useful and we'll move to the next section.